Hey there, greetings everyone, it's Gleecon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we finished off the novel The Day of the Dragon, we also finished off the time period um, that culminates with around 10 years after the Dark Portal. We're still in between the second and third wars, so now we're moving forward to, as you can see here, 15 years after the Dark Portal, so stay a while and listen to this one, it's called Kel'Thuzad. So we've got some material we're going to cover in Chronicles, probably about five little beats, um, five episodes, before we cover the other um, fiction that is part of canon. Uh, there's a short story, so we'll cover one of those, um, which again, the short stories tend to actually be longer episodes. We also have a, another novel to read, and then we, have, we also have a, a novella, a shorter kind of probably like around a 10 chapter or so, something long novel. So after we read these five, um, we might also have a pinch other, if I take a peek here, I, I keep a lot of this on tabs on my uh, phone so I can also plan on the go, you know, let you see a little bit into how the sauce is made here. Uh, but I think we might also have a few chapters of um, yeah, Arthas. So, tack that on there as well. So we've got five here, then six, seventy-nine, and then plus yeah, uh, of Blood and Honor, which is the novella. We'll read that one second, and then we'll read Lord of the Clans in the middle. So, um, my guess is we've got around 40 episodes before we enter the official material of the third war maybe give or take probably closer to 40 maybe even actually a couple over all right so, so here we go with Kel'Thuzad one of the most powerful creatures who heard the Lich King's call was formerly a leader among Dalaran's ruling Majorcrafts, the Kirin Tor Kel'Thuzad had once been a respected and admired scholar of the arcane arts. In recent years, his studies had veered into the dark realm of necromancy, the manipulation of life and death. Now, I do believe one of our novels touched on Kel'Thuzad and his role. I cannot remember which one it was. It might have been The Last Guardian. That's what I'm leaning towards, but it might have been something else. His actions, but yeah, none of the others have really mentioned him thus far. His actions weren't simply frowned upon. They were expressly forbidden by laws almost as old as the Kirin Tor itself. He had been censured repeatedly, stripped of much of his formal power, and was on the verge of being exiled from Dalaran altogether. And if you remember, um, remember on the, at the very end of the book we just read, Krasis has been censured. Kel'Thuzad was enraged by what he saw as the Kirin Tor's closed-mindedness and outdated precepts. Azeroth had just been invaded by creatures from another world. Dalaran itself had been raided in the aftermath of the Second War. The Horde's Death Knights, undead warriors infused with necromantic power, had infiltrated the city. Kel'Thuzad had seen them firsthand. He had no intention of leaving the fo that form of power unstudied now that he knew what it could do. The Lich King offered answers to all his questions, as well as access to the deepest secrets of the necromantic arts. He initially concealed his ties to the Legion, presenting himself as a being in command of his own destiny. Kel'Thuzad was in awe of the entity. He abandoned his duties in Dalaran and made the journey to Northrend to witness the power of the Lich King. He saw the ruins of Azjol Nereb. He met the conquered ruler Anubarak. He even observed the terrors that lay within the corrupted ziggurat called Nax Ramus. And there's a lot here to kind of unpack and track. Um, as a as a person that's in classic, we know Kel'Thuzad is one of the main people who lead the scourge and um, is a strong force in the Plaguelands. Um, I think he possibly is behind some things that Scalamance and Stratholme. Um, I don't know. I can't remember exactly if he's a boss in any of those or not. Um, yes, he also is talked about in. Wrath of the Lich King, of course, you deal with him a lot by the Wrathgate, by Nax, the, the Nax Ramus raid. 
Um, and even now in Shadowlands, where he has been defeated, because he must be dead if he's a role in Shadowlands, uh, he is still plays a big part in part of the Maldraxxi storyline. Okay. It was more than he had bargained for. Kel'Thuzad briefly thought to escape, but the Lich King's servants made it very clear that the time for second thoughts had passed. Kel'Thuzad would serve the Lich King. The only choice left to him was whether he would do so alive or undead. Kel'Thuzad was forced to crawl to the frozen throne in ice ground to accept his reward. The Lich King promised that loyalty would be repaid with power beyond imagining. He charged Kel'Thuzad to go to Lordaeron and gather an army of loyal followers. In time, they would be called on to spread the plague of undeath among the region's populace. Kel'Thuzad obeyed. His reluctance fell away and his desire to serve the Lich King grew. The power he had received was truly awe-inspiring. When Kel'Thuzad arrived in Lordaeron, he did so as a holy man, preaching the hope of a new religion. He won over the lower classes with demagoguery, playing on their disillusionment with Lordaeron's government. He proclaimed that he could ease the pain of the downtrodden, give hope to the hopeless, and lead the destitute to eternal life. The lies came easily to him. He had seen the power of undeath. Now that he was bound to the Lich King, he no longer feared it. He even hungered for the day when he would cast off the shackles of life and ascend to a greater undead form. For the rich, Kel'Thuzad took a different approach. He enticed nobles and landovers with offers of great power and immortality if they joined his cause. Some voiced concern about what seemed like a people's movement geared toward toppling the established order, but Kel'Thuzad eased their fears. He said the lower classes were no threat. They were simply a tool that the privileged could use to destroy their rivals and secure more wealth. As the years passed by, Kel'Thuzad recruited more and more people to his cause. Few truly understood the horrors that awaited them all. Only individuals whom he was certain he could turn to darkness learned the truth about the plague of undeath and what it would do to humanity. In time, Kel'Thuzad's followers would become known as the Cult of the Damned. I don't know. Um, I wonder if that's more of a Warcraft 3 thing. There might be some mention of that. I I, this All this stuff just makes me so eager. I can't wait to play through all of this again. Um, there's so much lore, and I, I'm not going to lie. I, I've leveled so many characters. I have... Uh, as I mentioned, in I've got close to 30 at this point um, maxed out characters. I don't even read the quest things unless I'm doing a specific lore master thing for fun. And at this point, I've totally backed off on it because I'm saving it for when we do it together. The cult's headquarters were established in the catacombs beneath an ancient human fortress called Scalamance. Okay, so that sounds like I was right there. There, Kel'Thuzad tutored his most loyal cultists in necromancy. The dark sorcerers quickly honed their craft. They conducted gruesome experiments, animating the skeletons dug up from beneath the fortress. Some necromancers hacked apart the unearthed corpses and used the pieces to create mindless undead giants called abominations. So now there we have the birth of abominations as a thing. While this work progressed, Kel'Thuzad occupied himself with the most important experiment, he had brought samples of the Lich King's plague of undeath from Northrend to Scalamance. He worked feverishly to create a strain of the disease that was both effective and subtle. He planned to spread the plague through Lordaeron's grain supplies, and he wanted its incubation period to be long enough that the humans would consume the tainted food before any symptoms surfaced, thus maximizing the number of victims. After many long months, he succeeded. So that's another thing I've also been dicey on, is the exact origin but the more i've kind of looked at the lore and glanced things over seems like um warcraft 3 by then the forsaken are going to exist this is kelthazad arriving at the frozen throne remember crawling there to beg for his power so look how cool uh, the lich king looks and what is so neat to me is that that's nerjul like i never realized nerjul was one of the lich kings his dope armor frost morin kelthazad's before he's been turned into an undead lich. Pretty neat stuff. All right, we got another episode in the Pipe 5x5. Five five. I thank everybody so much for watching and listening. Hopefully you learned a little bit today. I'll see you next time on Lore of Warcraft.